In this video, I'm gonna make a quick guide for you so you know that your TO4E turbo is gonna to go together correctly and you'll be able to diagnose if and why your turbo is binding or locking up. So the first thing I wanna cover is make sure your collar fits in here to where it's not too big, bigger than the bearing housing or this might need to be cut out some for the larger collar. This is usually an upgrade because it provides better uh, or more ground on the thrust bearing and then check to make sure you don't have any wear inside of the bearing seats and we do have all these parts available so I'll link to all the parts that we have in the description box. Sometimes you have dowel pins here and then sometimes it's threaded so if it's threaded and you have the dowel pins then you use these three bolts that go through these three holes that hold the bearing in place on the bearing housing. However, sometimes it can be threaded here and you don't use the bolts. In that case, it would be that, that you don't use the bolts as if you have a CNC plate like this. This actually retains the thrust bearing, so all you need is the dowel pins and this plate to hold it. If you use these bolts, sometimes they can interfere with this piece right here and cause it to lock up. And then uh, sometimes it will take this ring here or the bolts. So the way that you know that is if you have the dowel pins, you can put the thrust bearing on there and then you just use this ring which goes here. Now you can either use the ring or the bolt sometimes, so don't use both. If you want to use the ring, it goes here, but if you don't want to use that ring and you want to use the bolts and your bearing housing is threaded in three holes here, then you need to take this ring out of here and then you can bolt on the thrust bearing here and the plate will just go on. So use this or this, don't use both. And if you have this CNC machine plate here, you can't use this or that. You just need the dowel pins. The next thing I wanna cover is there's two different style of thrust collars and either will work. One style is like this where you have the extruded part on the collar and the other part is the extruded part on the, or I guess this is a collar, the extruded part on the collar and then the extruded part on the spacer. So these two go together and these two go together. You can't mix those up. Make sure you check your gap here in your with your piston ring seal to make sure there's very minimal gap. This will determine if your, your turbo is going to leak oil out of the front of it. And also, if it does uh, have a gap there, boosts will get down into the turbo, into the crankcase this way. So you have to really pay attention to, to this, what you're doing here. And another thing is, this one's actually bad, even though that thing compresses. So, sometimes you could actually put it together, even though it has a little bit of wear there. And as long as it compresses, and as long as it spins or as long as this collar and the seal goes on and it goes in and it spins and the uh, the seal is compressed it will work but if it doesn't spin and it starts locking up and stuff or if it doesn't spin it will cause it to lock up once you put it together another thing to look for is you have a two millimeter super back and a five millimeter super back both of these are actually five but there is a difference here that one's for a big shaft and this one's for a standard TO4E shaft. The way that you know the difference in those is you take the compressor nut on, that's on, that holds the compressor wheel, it's right there, and you put a socket on it and you find out what size socket fits on there. If a 3 8 fits on it or a 10 millimeter, then it's a standard TO4E shaft which is, which is like 6.3 millimeter or 6.35. If an 11 millimeter or 7 16th socket fits on it, then you have a big shaft turbo and you need the big shaft kit. Check your rear seal gap. You just put the rear seal in there and make sure that the gap is very minimal there. If you have some wear there and it's not compressing correctly, then it will cause it to leak oil there. Replacement 6262 compressor wheels. So I had somebody that was trying to rebuild his turbo and this was the exact compressor wheel he was putting on it. I don't know why he was doing that. So these are our replacement compressor wheels for the 6262. It's definitely not as pretty and it's definitely probably not as uh, 
performance oriented as you know these have the swept blades here and these are just straight blades but this is an exact replacement for the compressor housing profile on the 6262 so that's what we do have it for a replacement wheel if you want to go with something more perform performance oriented we could machine your compressor housing and the plate for a gtx 3582r compressor wheel which you would need a two millimeter super back plate which is been really hard for me to get so we can't really do a lot of those right now unless if you have a 6176 then we could use the two millimeter plate if it's still good to upgrade that the last thing to check would be check your rear seal area on the shaft i know this is a tdo3 turbo but this has the wear which you can see right there if some of the rear uh, area is worn on the shaft where the rear seal goes then you're gonna have a problem with the rear seal sealing correctly it's basically there's too much gap there where the seal can move around and then the oil just passes through it <clears throat> you can also take the rear seal of course this isn't the same one but you can take the rear seal and put it between there and check the gap if you need a replacement shaft, we also do have those for the 6262 and the 6266. And another thing to uh, pay attention to is your, well, if you have a ball bearing one, it's a whole, whole different story. But um, yeah, if you have a ball bearing one and you have the Gen 2, then the journal bearing shafts actually do work for the Gen 2s, at least some of them. It depends if you have a staggered shaft or not. One last variation that they had in the earlier models was that they used a ball bearing turbine shaft and they made journal bearings around it so that it would still fit onto a journal bearing turbo so this front one is actually smaller on the inside diameter than your normal to4e bearing and this bearing right here has a stagger to it that fits over the staggered sleeve that way you can use a ball bearing shaft on a journal bearing turbo that was really common with like the 5031E. So this made it so Precision didn't have to buy journal bearing turbine shafts. And they could use a ball bearing one as a journal bearing one. If the turbo is still locking up after you did this checklist, then most likely you bent one of the piston ring seals on the turbine or the compressor side. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you thought it was helpful or if you thought I missed something, then leave a comment below. As for those journal bearings for the uh, ball bearing, to make the ball bearing shaft work i do have those in stock so if you need those you can always contact us at turboavamerica at gmail.com for any products that you don't see in the description box just go ahead and send us an email